I have a lot of girlfriends of different age groups, right? And uh, older, younger, in between. And uh, the older girlfriends are kind of out of touch with how the world works, so they don't really know, you know, slang, and they watch too much Lifetime, not enough CNN. We were in my apartment at my kitchen table trying to plan a girl's trip. I'm like, we should go on vacation. Once again, let's go to Mexico. It's close. You can get luxurious accommodations for almost nothing. And the older girlfriend was like, Mexico, don't they kidnap women into sexual slavery in Mexico? I'm like, bitch, how would we qualify for that job at our ages? What is this? What are we gonna be, the nannies? Would teach them English, make the uniforms? You told me you had to buy a body pillow to help you go to bed at night. You have arthritis. Nobody wants an old ass sex slave. Do you understand? She said, well, how old do they want them to be? I'm like, we have aged out the sex trafficking market. My parents, Jamaican family, that I'm trying to uh, not be like. They're just yellers for no reason. My mom's in New York, I live in LA. She watches CNN all day and calls me with news that does not apply to me. She's like, jockey, there's a red pissed in Fresno, be careful. <laughs> I said, mommy, I live in Los Angeles, five hours away from Fresno. He can get in his car and come and get you? I said, mommy, if a man wants to drive any distance to attack anything you see here, he deserves it. <laughs> I'm trying to find a husband, you tripping. Right? You gotta lower your standards. I, uh, I was in China recently for two weeks. It's a long time to be somewhere where your, your mail doesn't go. Um. <laughs> Another continent. It was a 14 hour plane ride to get there. And then once we landed, it was a seven hour train ride from the airport to my first show. So much traveling. They had an American dude take care of me. Uh, he, he spoke Chinese. He got the flu on the trip. I got the flu from him, from all the talking. Not the fun way, just from chit-chat. <laughs> and we're on a seven hour train ride and there was a Chinese family that sat in front of us and they talked to each other as a family for seven hours. No one took a nap. No one got up to go pee. The grandparents, parents, teenagers, talk to each other as a fucking family for seven goddamn hours. What the hell are you discussing with your own family for seven fucking hours? And then there was the cutest little Chinese baby boy in the chair in front of me. He sat up in his chair and turned around to look at me. And he did with that face that said, this is new. <laughs> and he stared at me for seven hours. He didn't blink. I thought he was having a seizure. I'm like, is he okay? Because in America, we hit him. Somebody wants to talk to this kid. And this same Chinese family, they also ate. They ate their food for the entire seven hour trip. 14 course meal, live animals, mystery meats, mystery snacks. They ate the whole time, not one break from snack time. And they offered me all of it and I ate it because the refugee on this train was me. So they could tell she was hungry and confused and lost. So they offered me food and I ate it all. And uh, when we arrived after the seven hours, I had to use the bathroom as you could probably imagine. I don't know if you guys know, but in China, probably most of Asia, they have what they use, uh, the squat toilet. Just a hole in the ground. And I'm like, Jackie, you have never used a hole in the ground. You didn't watch a YouTube video first. No one sent you any tutorials. Go back to the hotel room like a lady. Don't make your first time in this country. Don't poop in a hole in the ground and you don't know what you're doing. Have a plan. Have a plan. But did you know that when you squat over a hole to use a bathroom, it don't matter what your plans are? I lost complete control over my entire body for 20 minutes. I was shitting for 20 minutes and I was shitting machine gun style. Everything came out of me. Every bad memory, every bad decision, things that I lost when I was a teenager, everything came out of me. A old pair of car keys came out of me. My divorce came out of me again. I'm like, Where, where'd you been? My prom date that I didn't know was gay till after the prom, he came out of me. I'm like, oh my God, it's good to see you. But here's the point of this really inappropriate, gross story. This is the best poop I've ever had in my whole life. It changed, it was so cathartic, it, it cleansed my soul. After this poop, it cleared my sinuses. It cleared my pimples. I don't need reading glasses anymore. 
My credit went up 100 points. I didn't know you could take a shit and change your life. Yo, you guys were pooping wrong. We're doing it incorrectly. Also, personal space in China doesn't exist. It's evacuation mode all day, every day. You want to go up to somebody and ask them, is today the last day? For what? The world, bitch. It's all just rushing all the lines. Everyone looks so panicked. Am I not doing something right? Then I get the email. What's happening? I prefer to wear dresses and skirts when I perform. But every line that I was in, in China, somebody Chinese, this close, right here. I'm like, hey, is, is this normal? OK, I'm oh, my bad, sorry. I'm the visitor, you know, respect. I go back to my hotel room after my first show, took my, my skirt off, and when I rolled it down, an Asian lady fell out of it. That's how close <laughs> they stand. It's a bit racist, but it's OK. I, uh, I was in Vegas last week. A lot of traveling, Vegas. It's a wonderful place, but if you go with the wrong posse of friends, not as much fun. I'm not married, I don't have any kids, I don't own a home yet. My best girlfriends, all family girls. And they wanted to fly. I'm like, no, we should drive. Right from here, you drive, you get your junk food, you get your posse. But they wanted to stop off and buy supplies because one of them owns a condo out there. And the supplies they wanted, they wanted to buy cake mix and baking tins so we could cook in the condo. I'm like, bitch, I'm not going to Vegas to bake fucking muffins. I'm going to Vegas to try prostitution, cocaine. Okay, try and be a lesbian and I get busted on Instagram. You know what I'm saying? I got things I want to try. And what's the rule, ladies? In Vegas, you get extra kind of hoard up with the outfit. Right? Your dress might be too tight, your nipples are coming out. Your shoes are killing you, you feel like crap, but you look hot. You hear such a purr. You're like, yeah, it's fucking perfect. I can hear you, sir. All right. <laughs> A ain't no shame, I'm looking like a hoe for this guy right here. Is that your husband? Is that your husband? No, boyfriend? Yeah, good job. Anyway. <laughs> I was in Vegas for play one time and I was extra, you know, horribly dressed. And I was on the elevator standing against the wall waiting for my floor. This man gets on the elevator. Instead of facing the door, faces me the whole time. You know why? He thought I was a hooker, he was shopping. So do you know that for two and a half seconds I was like, I never charged before. What does it feel like to make a dime from this shit for once? I'm like, you know what, sir? For you, it's between me and you. For you, $5,000. <laughs> and he was like, you know what? I got it. Let's go. I'm like, oh my God. I'm a whore now. Is it that easy? <laughs> I had a new slogan. What happens in Vegas pays some goddamn bills, okay? <laughs> you don't know what I need. Don't assume I'll say no. <laughs> I drove there one time with a boyfriend at the time. Uh, question for the guys. What is it about a long road trip that some of you men make unreasonable sexual requests in the car? <laughs> Perv, you know what I'm talking about? You know, you should know. I drove there one time, in the middle of the summer, the hottest time to go, boyfriend's driving, I'm in the passenger seat. We drive, and when you go, you know, any time of the year from LA, they have signs that say, turn off your AC so your car doesn't overheat. I turned off the AC, I cracked the window. Inside the car, it was 4,000 degrees. The boyfriend's like, hey, babe, while we drive, why don't you, you know, <laughs> come on, a little road attention, let's have some fun. I'm like, you want me to pass out mid blowjob, asshole? I'm like, what are you gonna tell the cop about the dead bitch in your lap? I'll die, I'm not gonna make it, you're going to jail. And you know what he said? I'll tell the cop you died doing what you love. Fuck you. 